Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Ah, uh, today we're gonna talk carburetors for our projects, like that one over there. Now, I've done a lot of, I guess, kind of research on small engines versus big engines. Um, I always refer back to the biggest engine which is the massive Holly 4150 carb. And this one here is a double pumper. So <clears throat> this here is a two stroke weed whacker carb. Now, the difference between these two is staggering. And I did some research today and my here's my search. The difference between two and four stroke Weed eater carburetors, okay? So grab your favorite smoke, beverage, popcorn, whatever you want to do, and hang out with Denny today because we may have an answer for our bog that we get on all these new four stroke gasoline engines. So, anyways, guys, here we go. Okay, guys, yeah, it's Sunday. Um, Excuse the stains on my shirt. I was working today. I was getting my muscle cars up and running and between the horrible fuel that we have to buy in nowadays and the old-school pop metal carburetors that We get You know even some of these are garbage pop metal this one here seems to be cast in aluminum but the ethanol will destroy everything in this carburetor after it sets after three months so um, for an example this is a double pumper that was off my 57 Chevrolet um, it is a code I think 47774 which means it was a late carb it's a double pumper inside this carburetor is junk it is total junk. Um, I've had to replace this carburetor um, because inside it looks like a croissant. It has layers and layers and layers of corrosion that actually froze the float in place. So now that car was supercharged. So you know when you start something that's supercharged, it has to be kind of on key. If not, if it backfires, It'll blow the supercharger right off the intake manifold and it started backfiring so I shut it off and I pulled the carb and I opened it up and I seen it look like a croissant from Dunkin Donuts I put it back on and I threw it here in my box of Holly carburetor parts through the years but now I've sold that car a long time ago and um, you know I put a brand new carb on it fresh fuel and some, well, what do they call that? Oh, it's like a fuel stabilizer. Yeah, I put that in there too. You can get different brands. Um, I use Seafoam. Um, a lot of guys use Stable. But uh, in your RC cars, if you're going to let them set for a while, which we do over the winter months, I mean, we run our cars probably one, two, three, four months out of the year at best. And Sometimes we invest so much money in these things that we don't want to hurt them. We don't want to wear them out, you know, because we have we have to hand build all our stuff. Okay. Now another question I had about that, which I'll get back to in a minute, is how do you want to be known? You know, when you build your own hand built RC car, you know, two thousand years from now, when aliens come and they see a dude with a man bun with a skeleton and electric bike or a dude with kind of a buzz haircut or a mullet with uh, a gasoline engine you know what are they gonna think of us then but anyways we'll get to that in a minute but so I search the differences between two and four stroke carbs okay for one the four stroke carbs have a bigger main jet okay to feed all the cylinders okay now 
the two-stroke carbs, they're really small main jets because they only feed one cylinder at a time. So I understand the way they think when they build these, like these V8s here, okay? I understand how they think because they go by cubic inch, you know, cc's or whatever you want to call that in the car. But you're going to see there's one little thing here in the very bottom of this carburetor here. This is a two-stroke carb, and that right there takes the pulses out of the crankcase of a two-stroke. So when that piston is flying around, it's constantly pumping and drawing air out of this, which feeds the carburetor. Okay. Now, none of these four-stroke engines have this hole, but they use a two-stroke carb. So, when you get your weed eater, weed whacker, whatever you want to call it out, um, after it's been sitting in your shed all winter long, and you fire it up, and it goes that bar, 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 and it keeps stalling, that's because it's all gummed up. And the, the fuel, um, the pulse, nothing's working no more. And uh, believe you me, I've had a couple of four-stroke um, carbs in my day that have the same kind of a problem, but um, it's because of the fuel, okay? Um, gas today is garbage, you know? You know, that's why it's cheap, I guess you could say, comparable to nitro fuels. Now, if you wanted to nitro fuel, this carburetor I mean it's gonna the difference between gasoline and nitro fuel for our hobby engines it takes twice as much nitro fuel to run an engine that it does a gasoline carburetor gasoline is a very volatile explosive compound where nitro you have to fill 50% of that cylinder up with nitro fuel for it to fire all right and then most of it goes by blow by pasture rings, which are toying engines, have that nipple on the bottom to get, expend that out of the crankcase. Because most of the oil in the two-stroke fuels lubricates the crankcase. Now these new four-stroke engines only have an oiling system. And if they're too lean, okay, you're going to get massive pre-detonation massive and I found that out with my L400 um, the, the compression was way too high on that engine and uh, it was actually pre-detonating and I felt that was a I guess an added um, knife in the heart of that engine because not only did it break crankshafts you know every other run because of the way the block was built, the smaller bearing in the front, the bigger in the back, and no center support bearing, I think the compression was killing that engine um, because it, it turns into thermal velocity. It's like jumping out of an airplane, you know? I mean, you can drop this carburetor and this carburetor out of an airplane, and when it hit, they're gonna hit the ground at the same rate, okay? Because um, when you, in, if you would put a charge on top of this smaller carburetor right here, which is lighter, like a compression explosion, this will hit the ground and go into the ground about five feet. This will just bounce because of the weight. So when you're dealing with an internal combustion engine, you have to kind of like know what you're doing when you decide how to set up the fuel system in it so anyways there's a whole new engine out there that is uh, about 13 grand I think it's a new V8 that come out they have a Holly style two-stage carb on it but I don't know about an accelerator pump these all need an accelerator pump if I could put one on this here I thought about doing this with a simple retrofit now this is not the carburetor off the Ingemore V8, but when you pump this here, this little bulb, okay, it shoots a um, 
a little charge into the intake manifold. At the same time, it draws in fresh fuel. So my thought was, okay, you know, this, this goes way out on a limb here, but, you know, give me your thoughts down below. How do you make an accelerator pump on something this small, on a four-stroke engine that does not have a pulse return to pump the fuel in? Because that bog that we get on a four-stroke engine here, like the Ingemore V8, is not only part of the overweight flywheel that's on there, which breaks off from Johnny Q90's video, it's from the horrible non-adjustable distributor on that engine. So my thought was to have a servo with just two screws and when you accelerate the, the, the throttle and pull it open, it pumps this at the same time. You hear that whistle? That's pushing fuel into the carb. That, that is your accelerator pump. Now on Holly's, this right here, this adjustable spring, is your accelerator pump with a diaphragm underneath here that shoots a squirt of fuel through these venturis up here down in the carb here to bring up that open throttle lag because when you open the throttle up on a V8 engine there's so much air coming in there the fuel scatters to the sides of the cylinders and the intake manifold and you get that empty charge of a bog where when that shoots it in it over richens the accelerator when you open it up and brings in a charge of fuel and then it's a little rich so that's why there's springs on these to adjust them that way you can you can just give it a little squirt or a big squirt depending on the cubic inch of your engine and your camshaft and your compression ratio and you know what gears you have in it what transmission you're running so there's a lot that goes into engineering when you try to I guess come up with something new and I think they're on the right path but I think that we need um, more people to come together you know what I mean and uh, you can put your comments down below um, it's like you know, it, it's a dawning age of all this stuff. I mean, this is fresh and new. This is like the Model A all over again, except in our RC hobby. And um, so, anyways, give me your thoughts on that. Um, and like I say, the, you know, the rest of the video here, I'll go over some other things here, but... You know, I'll, I'll go back to what I was talking about earlier there so um, so this could be a longer video than maybe you want to watch I don't know so you might have to have two smokes two beverages and maybe two bowls of popcorn I don't know but anyways guys I'll be right back All right, all right, all right, I'm back. Now, I'm gonna get back to what I was talking about earlier. How do you wanna be remembered in our hobby? Because every one of you people out there that comment on my channel and give your ideas never goes away, ever. And if these companies are smart, they will read those. It's kinda of like uh, something my father told me one time okay and it can go both ways it was an old Chinese proverb that we used to make fun of and um, it was called he who writes on shithouse walls rolls his shit in little balls he who reads these words of wit eats those little balls of shit but it can go both ways it can go in a negative or a positive direction so I'm going to go in a positive direction today, and I've not tried to mislead anybody here, okay? But you're going to see something in the corner up here, right there. That was my father's hat. Now, I do not believe in stolen valor whatsoever. Um, that man earned that hat, and uh, it's 
sometimes you ask who you are, why do you do what you do, and um, on my recent vacation home, I got my father's military records, okay? And uh, I know he was kind of like my hero growing up and all that stuff as a kid. Some, some people out there don't have fathers around for that. But uh, I'm going to switch my hat from my special forces, okay, because I believe in all special forces. These have 9mm slugs in them that me and a couple of buddies decided to make better. So I'm going to wear my father's first calf Stetson hat that he was awarded for his air combat stuff. Now he was only a crew chief and he was just a door gunner and he was a spec six but he got two bronze stars. I mean he got an air medal. He got so many medals of something that nobody wanted to believe in. But you know what? He did his job well. And the way I see it is, I'm damn proud to wear this hat. And I'm damn proud to display it in my house. And, uh, you know, after, you know, when a man's not around no more, how do you, how do you pay tribute to that person, you know? So, like I said before, I want to be known as a chip off the old block, <laughs> you know, hats off to him, not a man bun with an electric bike, you know, um, I'm not a fan of electric cars, I am not, although they are up and coming, we're going to have to deal with them and all that stuff, and I have to say, I do see positives in that, but I do not see... Um, in, in a high performance style, but I do not see reliability with our inner structure in America. We can't even keep AC on in Texas, you know what I mean? And so what happens when everybody comes home and tries to plug in their, their electric car? It's going to overtax the whole system and it's going to go down. So like don't fall for the, the money grab. You know, I mean, seriously, don't fall for it. Um, the way I see it is, we're the only ones that are trying this. China tried it and it failed badly. They have fields and acres and acres and acres of electric cars that, I mean, I seen a video where they, there was like 90, no, 70 some people died in a bus because it caught fire and they could not get out of the bus. That's an electric vehicle right there. So, I don't know. You can put your thoughts down below on that too, but I want to be remembered as high performance, combustion engines, RC cars, and super, super rare muscle cars. That's the way I want to go. You know what I mean? Like, so one day somebody might say, hey, you know what? I remember that guy, you know, I mean, if, if I can touch one person out there and try to give you something that is a free education, it's all worth it for me. So if you've noticed, I've not monetized none of my channels lately, and I've not really advertised too much other than some really important things and some cool stuff that's going on with uh, kind of our stateside hobby, you know, but um like I say, anyways, I'm going to end this video now, and I'm going to throw a steak on the grill, you know. So, anyways, love to all. Like, share, subscribe if you want, and I will catch you later, man, with some cool content. Adios.